drivers allows us to automatically update different values in our scenes. So instead of having to manually adjust all values, like the location of objects, we can make them change on their own. This is a super powerful tool that we can use to create really advanced things. Let's see how it works by taking a look at this cube. If we look in the properties panel, we can see the cube's location along x, y and z. These are all values, and in this case, they are values representing a position in space. If we change the x location value, you can see that the cube moves along x in our scene. But that is also everything that is changed. If we change the c location value, it only affects this cube's location along c. All of these values are completely independent and don't affect or are affected by anything else. This is not true anymore when we start using drivers. Let's try adding one. Hover over the location values, right click and select add drivers. The location values now turn purple. This is how we know the values are now being controlled by drivers. To remove them, just right click and select delete drivers. Now the purple disappears. If we right click on the C location value and choose add single driver instead, only that value turns purple, becoming controlled by a driver. If we look at a value without a driver, like the X location above, it can be changed to anything we want. There are no limits. This is because the value is not controlled by anything else. However, if I try to change a value with a driver, like the C value, nothing happens. The value is changed in the UI, but the cube doesn't move, and whenever I let go, it returns to zero. I can't manually control it anymore. This value is now being controlled by something else. To see what, we need to open our driver window. It is located in the graph editor, drivers. Here in this list, you can see all the drivers your selected object has. Our object only has one, the C location. Let's select it and open the properties panel. It is here we can set up the rules for how the value is controlled, making the driver actually do something. Currently, we are using what is called a scripted expression. This is the default type of driver. If we click on it, you can see that we get a list of other types available. It looks like there are many options, but there are really only two. Either you use the scripted expression or you use the rest. In this part, I will use the scripted expression since it makes it easier to learn how drivers are working. I will go over the other ones in a later part. Right away, we can see that we have an error here. This is because in Blender 2.7, scripted expressions are not running automatically for security reasons even though they are the default type of driver. It is just because you don't want these to be used in a file from a bad user. That is why if we want them to work, we have to tell Blender, yes, I am trusting this file. If this was an unknown file I had downloaded from the internet, I would not trust it since I don't know if the one who created it had bad intentions or not. But since this is a new file I just created myself, I can trust it. To tell Blender that we trust it, we have to save the file somewhere first. After it is saved, a reload trusted button appears next to the error. Any new changes you have made will disappear when you click reload, so make sure you have just saved. If I now click reload trusted, the error disappears and the driver is now working. Since we are using scripted expression, it is this expression field that decides what value the driver will get. Currently, it says 0 0.000. That's why we can't change the value to anything else when we try to drag the slider in the properties panel. The field is in control of the value and the field says it should be 0. If we change the field to 5, you can see the cube is moved 5 steps up and that the C location in the properties panel now says 5. We are now affecting the location of the cube by changing the contents of this field. The magic about this is that we can do math in this field and whatever the result is will become the C location of the cube. For example, if we write 1 plus 2, the cube is moved 3 steps. If we add a times 3, it is moved 7 steps. 1 plus 2 times 3. Now, this is pretty static, and no matter what numbers I choose to write here, I could have written it directly in the properties panel instead of using a driver. So let's go to the interesting and useful part, 
and that is that you can use values from other places in your file. This way we can make different objects affect each other. Beneath this expression field you have what is called variables. We have a big add variable button and also one variable already created by default named var. A variable is where we get the value from something else and use it. Let's try to take a position value from this sphere by adjusting the default variable. First we select the object that holds the value. Let's use sphere. Now that we have selected an object, we can choose what value from the object we want to use. Let's select the C location. Since the sphere is positioned 3 steps above the ground, the variable gets a value of 3. You can see the current value of the variable here below. Now this variable will always hold the same value as the C location of the sphere. So how are we going to use this variable in the driver? By simply writing its name in the expression. In this case the name is var since that was the default. So remove everything and write just var instead. Since the variable has a value of 3, writing the variable name in the expression field gives the driver a value of 3. Writing the name of a variable in the expression does the same thing as writing a number, except that the value can change. Now the cube is 3 steps above the ground, just like the sphere. And if I move the sphere, the cube moves as well. The C location of the sphere becomes the C location of the cube. This seems very simple, just copying the height of another object, so let's make something that isn't quite as straightforward. If we in the variable change the channel to use x instead, the cube is now 5 steps below the ground. This is because the sphere has a location of minus 5 along x, so the driver gets that value. The x location of the sphere becomes the c location of the cube. And if I move the sphere side to side, you can see how the cube moves up and down. As you can see, it is very easy to start making things complex. Now, we don't have to just use the straight value from the variable. Since this field allows us to do math, we can change the expression to say var times 2. We are now taking the value of the variable and multiplying it by 2. The sphere is minus 5 steps along x, so the variable value is minus 5. Minus 5 times 2 equals minus 10, and as you can see, the cube is moved 10 steps below ground. We can continue doing more, making the expression as complex as we want. If we add 2, the cube is now 2 steps higher than it was before, at 8 steps below ground. Minus 5 times 2 plus 2 equals minus 8. We can use multiple variables as well. Let's include a third object, a cone, to test it. Let's add a new variable and name it cone. Change it to transform channel like the other variable and choose the cone object, since that is where we want to get a value from. We want the C location, so select that. The driver now gets a value of 2, the same as the C location of the cone. It is always a good idea to name the variable something that says what it is, like when I named this one cone. This makes the expression clearer. The name of the first variable, var, doesn't really say anything, so let's rename it sphere instead so we know what it is. Now, let's try to change the expression a bit from say plus 2 to plus 1. When we press enter, we get an error. This is because there is something wrong with our expression. The problem is that there is nothing called var anymore. We have changed the name of the variable. If we change from var to sphere, as the variable is now called, the error disappears. Here we can see that what we write has to be correct, otherwise Blender won't understand and it won't work. Now, let's try using our second variable as well, the cone. Replace the current expression with sphere plus cone. Both the values are now added and the result is then used for the location of the cube. Let's change back to using the C location of the sphere to make it easier to see what is happening. The C location of the sphere is 3 and the C location of the cone is 2, so the cube is moved 5 steps. Using this powerful expression field, we can create just about any result we want by changing the math inside. But don't fear if math isn't your strong suit. Mostly we will only need simple things, like multiplying, dividing, adding and subtracting. This concludes the first part. 
Now you have seen how we can add a driver to a value of our choice and then have that value update automatically when we, for example, move something else. And by changing the expression, we can change what value it gets any way we want. Great.